Yeah, the Falco's definitely back. Uh, I've been enjoying the Falco a lot more again. Like, definitely, like, when I play on Ranked or whatever, I've been going Falco. But then I just showed up yesterday, and my Falco was playing so badly that I was like, well, this is why I play more than one character. <laughs> Even though I'm on more of a Falco wave, it was just like a Fox day. For sure. So, a lot of people don't use more than one character. Mm -hmm. So, like, what advantage does it give you to have Fox and Falco and then Sheik in your like to choose from i think the character is mostly just like well Sheik is more of a counter pick character for me like it's it's somewhat rare that i just feel like going all Sheik. when i do that it's more of like a challenge to myself uh but i think that like in terms of the spaces they just have like certain styles that they can both do like if you feel like zoning really hard or like doing certain types of combos like falco has the control and he has like the his combos are like a little bit trickier to like it's harder to get a neutral opening that'll lead to a combo whereas fox can kind of combo off of everything you have like the higher cap in the combo like you can do a mix up into like an early down air kill or something like that fox is like a lot more like i get impatient i just want to move around and i want to like create chaos and make things annoying for people and so like if I'm in that mood where I just want to like move around and like mix people, then I and I try to play Falco. Doesn't really work out super well. And you can play Fox when you just feel like running around like zoning people and stuff and like playing it really methodical. But I think it doesn't fit the character as well. You kind of give up some of Fox's strengths by playing like that. So you know, I feel like if they're both around the same skill level, then uh, kind of like like lets me play the game. Up appropriately based on like how I'm feeling that day, which feels nice. Because I hate when like you feel like you want to play a certain way, but it's not the way that your character is the best at, you know? Sure. And, and then Sheik is just like, I like Sheik for the counter picks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was watching one of your streams where you were playing Sheik and you did some really cool stuff. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. For sure. I think my Sheik actually recently got a bit better. I don't really know why. <laughs> but uh, recently when I played her, I was like, oh, like, I haven't been using Nair as much. Like, Nair's so good. And, like, <laughs> the CC is just broken. I haven't been CCing enough and stuff. So it's cool to have the variety. Nice. Um, and I, I was thinking about jump squat a lot. So how does Falco having a very big jump squat, how does that, like, affect your when you play as Falco? You're saying, like, how does it change my decision-making as Falco? Or, like, sure. how does the tech skill work with the multi-main? Okay, yeah, how does tech skill work? Yeah, okay, I think... I think what really helps me is that I do short hop wave dash for the five frame jump squat characters, and I do full hop wave dash for the three frame jump squat characters. So, like, I do kind of like a squeeze motion for like Fox and Sheik, and then for Falco, it feels like I'm doing like a short hop air dodge, like I would do a short hop aerial, where I like it just feels like a totally different motion rather than doing like a slower, fast wave dash. So I think that kind of helps them stay separated. I do think that there's always some sort of small issues where like the ledge dash feels slightly different or whatever. And you just kind of have to like, kind of keep the characters warm a little bit here and there to make sure you don't forget. It's a lot easier to go from like a Fox ledge dash to a Sheik ledge dash than a Fox ledge dash to a Falco ledge dash. But the longer I play all three characters, the more I feel it kind of stabilize. Nice. And a lot of people don't go, don't use Falco's grab. Why is that? I think it's because it's like generally like more like low payoff. I think it's good to some degree. Like it's useful when you, it's useful if you can throw the opponent off stage. And I think that there are positions where it's pretty good to like up throw Sheik or Marth where you might you might get a combo or you might get like a shark or something like that. But I think like the lack of guaranteed follow-up out of the throws prevents a lot of people from wanting to use them because it always sort of feels like you're selling yourself short by doing a grab. Uh, 
I think it. I think the grab is good, but you know, it's not. It's not amazing. <laughs> like I see the argument for not grabbing too much, and I think it's just hard to find the the, the right amount to use it. I think that it's always kind of changing how much like how much I prefer to use grab and stuff like that. I, I personally don't think like the grab is that good, but if you never do it, you get too predictable. But like I can understand why people don't use it enough. Pretty tempting to not use it. Sure. I noticed on Yoshi's Island or Yoshi's story, you love Randall, like destroying your opponent by using Randall. <laughs> Randall's sick. I, I that's, that's super fun. I don't think I'm like the best the best in the world at Randall or anything, but I do think it's like it gives me an extra tool. You know, it's like if I can use Randall better than my opponent, then that's a free dub. So sure. and it's fun. For sure. I like the dynamic the dynamic nature of Randall interactions. Yeah. It's come nice. back to bite me quite a few times though. <laughs> uh. But that's what it, that's it's all fun. So yeah, right. Um, yesterday I was playing with my friend and he had me off stage and then I just air dodge onto the stage just like to get safely back onto stage and just I'll take some damage. But I don't see that many players that just air dodge back onto the stage if they're at a huge disadvantage. What character? I was chic. <laughs> Well, what character were they? Oh, uh, Marth. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think I think a lot of people do it. Uh, in so, like for instance, like the peaches, they do it too much. Like they always air dodge back. Uh, I think that like I don't know. I think that like if the character doesn't have like a really really strong instant punish, for example, like Sheik Marth then like the air dodge just becomes really broken because mostly because it gets you to the ground. So like you use your double jump air dodge, get to the ground. Now you have your double jump back. It's not like Marth is going to kill you out of a grab or whatever. Um, I think though that you are correct. And I think that air dodge could be utilized a lot better for recovery options in the future. I think in particular... Like, there's a lot of spots where I think certain characters should use it, like, pretty much all the time. I think some Marths and some Falcons use it well when they get, like, that double jump back and you grab the edge and they kind of do, like, that air dodge back to the stage, but, like, they kind of do it a slight down angle. I think that's, like, that comes up quite a bit, but most, most people do it wrong. I think um, S2J is really good at doing it with Falcon. Where he air dodges, he air dodges in a way where, like, you know, like you want to keep you, you want to keep your invincibility so that their their move misses, but you want to like also land as soon as possible, you know. And I think there's a good amount of skill in, involved in that, and I think it's somewhat somewhat underexplored for sure. And even like today, I kept getting like stuff where I would like, I was just kind of messing around with it, and I would kind of get like. See, what did I do earlier? Hmm. Like, sometimes you can do stuff with Falco where you, like, short hop at a fox and you, like, air dodge through their up tilt and get a shine or something like that. Like, or, like, some move that they do. But it feels somewhat... It feels somewhat random, but I can tell it's just because, like, we haven't fleshed it out yet. I do think that, like, not even just recovery, but in the future, like, well-angled air dodges to, like, avoid a move and then put you in a position to punish could potentially be uh, useful. Nice. Uh, okay, my last my last question just for Melee is, now Bizarro Flame is back at Verdugo. Have you spoken to him? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's cool to talk to him after so long. We used to play way back. <laughs> at SSS, right? Yeah, but like, no, like, before SSS, like, I wasn't even like that good yet. And like like I like I was like hmm. Like I was maybe like bottom of PR level or something, and he would just come over to my house and we would play a bunch. <laughs> nice. And, and that why was do like you think, way, way back in the day now. Do you think he's gonna enter that's awesome. Do you think he's gonna enter more events besides Verdugo? Oh. 
I didn't really talk to him too much about that. Like, I know he's got a lot going on with his work, and that's why he's been so busy, like, being a lawyer this whole time. Uh, so I don't really know exactly, like, what his schedule is. And he seems like he's taking the game pretty casually right now. Like, like he kind of just, like, you know, if, if he loses, he kind of just, like, chuckles. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem like he's really, like, locked in and trying super hard to win, but... It, I think he's having a good time. So, you know, like I would probably let him get a little bit more comfortable coming back to locals for a bit before I tried before I was like, Hey, you're going to come out to, you know, majors or like star league or something like that. You know, oh, it's man. just, he's only been, he's been back for a few weeks though. And it's really cool to like, it's actually really interesting because Murloc has been showing up to Verdugo too. Right. So we have, we have two Ganons and uh, apparently Murloc actually, Epic Murloc actually works at the law firm with Bizarro Flame. <laughs> and they both just come to Verdugo together and play Ganon. <laughs> that, that's amazing. And, like, I love that because, you know, Murloc got, like, third at Verdugo. Like, he's been putting up numbers. So it's kind of cool to have... Uh, anytime there's, like, a new character or, like, something that people aren't familiar with, you know, it kind of, like, tests everyone. And it's really easy to get in, like, the patterns of, like, you kind of know who attends the local and stuff. And so, like, whenever you have new members, it always throws a wrench in things. And that's always really cool. For sure. Um, and then you, you mentioned Star League. I was just wondering, like, how important is Aiden for Melee today? It seems like so many players are inspired because Aiden is really helping out everyone by hosting an amazing tournament series. Yeah, I think that, so I think, I think that without Aiden, SoCal would still be surviving, and not just surviving, like, I think we would still, like, pre-Star League, you know, we were still doing well, but it, it adds, like, this, it adds, like, this competitive edge, like, I think we were doing well as a community, as, like, people who show up, and we all like each other, and we play some games and compete, you know, but I think, I think that, like, Aiden has really elevated the competitive drive of a spe especially of the D2 players. That's what I'll say. I think for D1 it it's fun. Like it, it's okay, what I'll, I don't want to like underrate how cool it is. You know what I mean? Like I love having D1 and I think it's so cool to be playing all these good players and it's really good for all of us and stuff like that. But I think that like pretty much everybody in D1 would be still traveling to majors for the most part and like com having some high level competition. Like I think without Star League, you know, Josh Mann is still just as motivated is what right. I'm trying to say. Right. But like is cliche as motivated, is nut as motivated, is uh, Khalid as motivated, you know, like these players who are kind of like can maybe be in D1, can can maybe be at the top of D2, and, like, the people further down in D2 who are trying to work up to that top of D2, I feel like it really, like, puts the fire into that part of our community. And I think that for, like, the future competitive scene, that's the most important thing, is that, right. like, these up-and-coming players, people who are below D2, want to get into D2. And so I feel like everything below the top just got super accelerated, and, like, everybody's having a way better time, and I'm super thankful to Aiden for that. And then, like, everybody at the top is like, oh, cool. Like, there's Star League. I like Star League. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's a huge tournament coming up. 